John Janji from Miranda said Kubicon, and I'm here uh, today, this afternoon, with uh, Shahar Binyamin from uh, Inigo. Yeah. You are the founder of Inigo, are you not? That's true. Nice to meet you. Um, nice to meet you, John. Inigo makes GraphQL security, and I went to them earlier and said, I don't know anything about GraphQL to speak of, and I certainly don't know anything about GraphQL security, access control, and policy management. Please tell me everything. And they started telling me it was so interesting that I said, no, no, wait, wait. Please come here and tell all the all the uh, Cloud Native and Coffee viewers what you were going to tell me. Please tell me first about what the problem is around GraphQL and then how you're solving it. Absolutely. So GraphQL open source standard came out of Facebook 2015, 2016. We're seeing massive adoption of it across startups, enterprises, all sort of industries. Similar to Kubernetes, very developer-driven adoption is coming in. Um, the reason we're here at Kubicon is just we want to prevent the situation where security was an afterthought when adopting Kubernetes. We want to make sure that when adopting GraphQL, security is part of the adoption process. And when you adopt a freeform approach like GraphQL is, when the server is saying, ask me anything, you're opening the door for abusers to take advantage of it and send abusive calls. If it's to take down your server, abuse it, or worst case scenario, create a data extraction. It's already been, there's report on HackerOne and CVEs about how GraphQL can be abused, and we want to put the best guardrails, the best building blocks, as part of the dev cycle to make sure your GraphQL is protected so you can adopt GraphQL and scale with confidence. So, Describe your, your, what I always wonder about as a developer when I hear about a new security solution is, will it provide the security I need without becoming a burden on mm -hmm. the development process and, and ultimately on users too? Absolutely, great question. We want to help backend engineers. We want to help the architects, even as a security team, get the most out of their GraphQL. Get the most out of how data is being consumed with them and help them by minimizing the overload they have to build and maintain, but at the same time provide enough insights of the business logic, performance rhetoric, and everything we can do as part of the API building lifecycle to when it gets to production, it's well protected and it's scalable. Uh, interesting, so developing the security for an application that uses GraphQL can actually be a, a one-off process. It, 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 it's, is it possible, to, it must be possible to speak in terms of certain best practices, but there's a great deal to learn from an open API yeah. and the transactions that actually occur on it to I, your application. Absolutely. I, GraphQL, it's hard to think about GraphQL security as a vertical because it's not just on the edge. The engineers, the developer teams are the, the team that are responsible for the schema and the, the ones who allow the access control. So you have to gap those bridges between the development moment and when it hits production. So we're looking at this as a platform. Always look at uh, the, of the of their offering with security lenses, but the breadth of GraphQL touches all personas in the, in the journey, from developers, backend engineers, architects, all the way to when it comes to incident response for the security team that is trying to figure out what happened. It's a very easy question to figure, to ask what happened. Sure. A very hard question to answer if you don't have the right tools in place to contextualize what happened in the queries. The big, the big companies like Shopify, PayPal, Netflix, they have the resources to build all those building blocks themselves, mm -hmm. but not everyone. So our goal is to productize, generalize whatever building block is needed for GraphQL and offer it to everyone. We're completely agnostic. We work with any GraphQL server, open source or commercial, and it's a very easy integration. And I, one of your colleagues explained to me earlier that there are multiple ways of, of consuming and using uh, the, the Inigo yeah, product, correct. that it can live as a sidecar and in other forms. Correct. And do, do you also offer it as a, you know, as a managed service? Is it? Not today. Today we're offering, so when we think about agnostic, when I mentioned the GraphQL, open supporting any GraphQL server. It's also supporting all sort of deployments. Uh, we really want to even the playing field around GraphQL adopters. So you can have an ego as a sidecar, 
as a middleware integration, as a gateway, even as managed, as hosted. But that's not, not our focus today. Um, those agents run on the customers, on the client deployments, uh, very efficient, extremely fast, barely add any low, any uh, latency to the calls while we're monitoring the request and the response. And later there is a cloud analytics plan where you can gain all the insights, analytics, anomalies, performance metrics, and for schema planning. Okay, so so, so the active part of the program then is, is recording things very fast as they happen okay. and, and preventing things from happening, returning you know, answers to queries about authentication and authorization and, and resource access. Correct. But, uh, but then the, the reporting is a, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an asynchronous activity. It's a, you know, Correct. A that, can, activity. that can later connect to any of the, to any SIM to flag or send anomalies or triggers in case there's a security team that are interested to know about abusive activity. Huh. The, the, um, the idea, I, I, I guess it's foreign to me because I have mostly worked in REST environments mm -hmm. where, of course, REST was also supposed to be self-documenting, which it really isn't, in the way that GraphQL is managing now to be. Yeah. Um, that uh, that that ultimately, if you're doing endpoint protection, it's a very primitive kind of security problem. You know, do I allow this endpoint to be hit with this query by this entity or not? Yeah. Right. Um, but this is more complicated. I mean, you know, your these are database transactions. They're semantically rich, and and they're continuous potentially. Yeah. So so. I mean, how do you even do that? Is yeah, well, it, you know? When we think about how query protection, access control, and rate limiting all works together around GraphQL, yeah. let's take the analogy of your classic WAF or API security for REST. You might be able to come and say, hey, I want to limit this REST API or this login attempt mm -hmm. to a certain amount in a certain window, like 20 times a minute. How do you do this with GraphQL when one query one GraphQL API can actually send hundreds, if not thousands, login attempts. So how do you bring those analogies from the standard WAF protection into GraphQL? And how do you monitor at the same time, that's kind of the inbound, how do you monitor at the same time those queries are not bringing a lot of load to your backend or allowing uh, ex data extractions? How do you make sure not too many objects and data is being responded back allowing an abuser to scrape your data or do an extreme load on your backend. So this, without contextualizing the query, yeah. without understanding what the developers had in mind, it's a very hard problem to solve as if you're only looking at the, that layer of the HTTP code. So then, how are you as the application provider yeah. uh, serving developers? I mean, they're the ones who are going to explain their intention to you. Um, how do they do it? Are, are your SDKs and documentation set up in yeah. such a way that it facilitates Everything that? Everything we do is in a declarative manner. Think about Kubernetes, uh, how do you define, the configure Kubernetes. We do the same concept. Um, the configuration itself is part of the developer lifecycle. It's through their Git commands. Uh, and we, at the same time, we're able to update our agents and enforce those configurations. Uh, very interesting. Yes. Huh. Very so, seamlessly. So it's a GitOps oriented kind of approach. You can take yeah. it out Yes. Hmm. Uh, you know, I, I think I'd like to, to ask you to, to come on the, uh, the program and you know take closer to an hour and and really dig into the product once I've had a chance to familiarize myself. We would can you, do that. Would you be willing to do that? We can I do think that. this is something that's going to interest a lot of people. I, I, it, it's foreign to my technical experience, and so I'm immediately like, wow, let's keep talking. Please explain, but you know, as I think one of your colleagues said, GraphQL is not, is not the job here. Educating people about GraphQL is not the job. GraphQL you know? security awareness is just beginning. Yeah. Uh, and organizations are not necessarily aware. If you think about the, the adoption of Kubernetes, uh, security teams all, only learn about it two minutes too late. So, bringing this awareness as part of the adoption is key, really? yeah. and this is why we're here at KubaCon.